let's just talk quickly about um, how do we actually have a conversation? We've talked about getting to know a therapist and mm -hmm. what does that look like so that we can build uh, an idea of who we might refer to. But but let's just talk about when it comes time to maybe suggest to someone you might want to mm -hmm. see someone for help. Um, right. How do we have that conversation with someone in our congregation? I would say carefully and in love, right? Typically, I this is not something I'm going to say to someone that I don't know very well. Um, it's probably not going to go over well unless they're coming to me for advice. But if I'm walking with someone and I know someone and I see this con continuous struggle that they have or, you know, they continue to reach out to me for support because they're really having a hard time at some point we will probably have the conversation about getting professional counseling. Uh, and how I would engage that conversation, again, you have to have relationship. Uh, the person has to know that you care about them. Yeah. And it would probably be something like, you know, as we've walked together over these past months, these past years, I've noticed that this depression just keeps coming back for you over and over again. And I'm, I'm limited in what I'm able to do to help you. I wonder if maybe it's time for you to see someone who specializes in helping folks who struggle with depression. Um, typically, people will hear that well. Um, I, however, I want to say you need to be really careful in the language that you use because you can unintentionally communicate you're too messed up for me to continue to be your friend. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what we want to avoid. Or, you know, if I'm functioning as the pastor or a church leader, you're too messed up for me to continue to walk with you. That's not what I want to communicate. I, I want to communicate. I care about you. I think that this help will really help you. And I am going to continue to walk with you through the process. Right. Yeah, so it doesn't mm -hmm. feel like abandonment. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's so important. abandonment or rejection. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. So let's just talk about a church and um, maybe they're in a community and they haven't engaged in the area of mental health professionals or with them, and, but maybe they want to build bridges. Yes. What are some ideas, creative thoughts about a church? who's wanting to help their congregation. Maybe they're wanting to say, hey, we want to kind of remove that stigma as much as possible if it exists. Right. What can they do in their community to engage and build bridges? Mm -hmm. I think first within the church, let's start talking about it. You know, are we hearing about these things from the pulpit? Are we hearing about them in Sunday school? Can we do a small group that addresses issues around this. There are several really good books that you could walk through together with a group to talk about these things. Um, can Is there someone in the church who would be willing to give a testimony and share their story? Um, because we see if one person is vulnerable, then other folks in the church feel safe mm -hmm. to open up. Um, I would also want to think about, are there mental health professionals who are people of faith and can come in and talk to us about this. Can we do, you know, a Saturday workshop? Can we bring this person as a special guest and, you know, interview them um, from the platform? Can we, um, the, so I think all of those are ways to do this. Um, but also in most communities, there are mental health services around um, and typically they're combined with social services and so can we as a church begin to engage in volunteer work you know can we partner with some of these organizations to begin to support folks who are really struggling yeah that's really good and i, I would like to just add just as one additional thought um, and maybe even ha have you speak to this briefly and that is, you know, we've talked about care for the person struggling with a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, and that person might be single. And even if they're single, they have a family. Mm 
Right. But they might be a parent with a kid who's struggling with mental disorder, or they might be the parent or whatever the case may be. And there's people who care about them and love them. And it's also important to think about care for them too. Sometimes they can get overlooked possibly Mm -hmm. in this process. And it's understandable that that can happen because we're focused on where we see the need most evident to us in front of us. Mm -hmm. But is it important that we also come alongside those other individuals that, that love that person who live with them and are watching this as well? Absolutely, absolutely. What we see in families where there's someone with a mental disorder, um, we see often a lot of conflict in that family system, um, just because this is so difficult to deal with. We will see family members who feel overwhelmed um, or they're concerned about their loved one. They may even fear for the safety of their loved one. Depending on the mm-hmm. what's going on with that person, they might fear for their own safety. Um, there's usually guilt. There's shame that yeah. this is true about our family system. Um, they may be embarrassed by the behavior of their loved one. Um, they may feel like, what did I do that caused this? Yeah. You know, is this my fault? Is this a consequence, you know, of something that I've done? earlier in my life, or am I a bad parent, Um, that sort of thing. So I I think that they're dealing with a lot. I know that my work with people with severe mental illness, the kind of illness that doesn't stop, you know, people live with it their whole life, most of them end up losing their families. Mm. And it's one of the saddest things that I've seen Um, Why does that happen? It happens because the family doesn't know how to engage. The family doesn't have support. People don't come around uh, uh, alongside them and walk with them through this. And eventually it becomes too much for them. Uh, And so I want to think about very early, how can we support the family so that we never end up there? Letting them know they're not alone. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I also know as a mental health professional that sometimes what we see in a person is due to problems in the family. Sure. It's not all, it's, it's not generally only that, but we can have some family systems that are really, really unhealthy. And um, the work that I do with an individual actually will begin to affect the family system. Yeah. Uh, it sometimes is a difficult um, path for people to walk. You know, if they're starting to get healthier and the family is not getting healthier, there will be some resistance from the family. But over time, one person's health will begin to shape the rest of family. Yeah. And it's so important that as we refer and that person begins to get that help, then just to pay attention. Yes. Be aware mm-hmm. of the how that's affecting the family system and the dynamic there. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. 